Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are very excited to be here. Glad to have you here, too. And um, we're going to be talking about complying with OMBA 123, Management Responsibilities for Internal Controls. And I am very excited to be joined by two of my very favorite co-workers, um, Matt Fisher and Tom Bean. Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Teresa. I, I know you say that for everyone. I've heard you say that about other people. No, never. My name is Matt Fisher. I'm our uh, DOD risk executive. So Tom and I operate across a lot of different risk use cases and across the entire DOD and portions of the IC. Tom? Oh, you're on mute, Tom. There we go. I uh, did that earlier. There we go. <laughs> uh, Tom Bean here. I'm glad to uh, be demonstrating to you our A123 solution and uh, hope you get a lot out of it. I uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. I think it's going to be a great, a great session. So I've got a couple of housekeeping tips that first I want to, uh, to go through. You are automatically placed on mute, but we really want to hear from you. We want your questions, so please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We want to make this interactive. We'll be breaking in and asking questions sort of throughout, um, so don't be shy. The session is being recorded, and it will be up on our ServiceNow YouTube playlist in a couple of days. So if you're looking to share it with coworkers, you should be able to find it on Friday. I will be putting in the chat, not the Q&A, but the chat, the links to the YouTube channel. And after the session, um, if you could stick around and just answer a really quick survey for us, it really does help us prepare and, and plan other webinars that you hopefully will enjoy. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Matt, who's going to walk you through the agenda, then take you into the session. Hey, thank you, Teresa. Let me go ahead and grab that share. Can everyone see this deck? Yep, it looks great. Great, thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to do a real quick um, kind of overview and intro, starting with sharing some of the things we hear from customers about their existing enterprise risk and, and FIR and ARMIC programs, uh, as well as kind of how we do things. And then Tom's going to go through and take you through a demo. I'll stop sharing so I can help support questions and Q&A on the chat. So we'll keep it short and brief. Did you want to, did you want to put it in presentation mode or did you want to keep it in the oh, slideshow mode? Yep, thanks. Um, so within ServiceNow, we actually have this very large, robust, mature risk suite that uh, a lot of folks aren't really completely aware of. Now, this, uh, this risk suite actually goes much broader than enterprise risk or really anything FM related. I mean, we have customers who are using us for all forms of digital risk management, um, customers getting into the mission with it managing their, their coop and, and, and continuity in their supply chain. Um, but today we're really going to focus on what we're doing to help you improve your fire programs, help you improve your ARMIC programs, your enterprise risk programs, your internal controls, everything related to dealing with different risks, different controls, audits, audit results and caps and making progress and eventually improving your audit results and getting to those favorable opinions. Now, in terms of challenges and what we hear from customers, of course, lots of varied challenges, but it really all kind of boils down to customers dealing with lots of data and data that kind of lives all over the place and very often doesn't even necessarily live in a system or sometimes lives in multiple systems. So they have a lot of manual processes where they're trying to combine this data make sure it's accurate, consolidate it, and give a, a large review, right? And these challenges you know, really end up creating visibility problems where the folks at the top or even the folks in the middle may not necessarily be able to get the real status of things that they want, or they may have to go through an effort to do things like just say, how are we doing on our caps? You know, do we have things that are overdue? How do these caps really relate to different risks? Um, and so the, this very manual, disparate environment creates lots of different challenges. And of course, it's very difficult to automate when you have data living in spreadsheets and SharePoints and system A and system B, right? So what we do at ServiceNow is we bring all of this stuff together. We bring the people, the processes, the data, uh, and that allows us to really automate and let you see exactly what was going on. 
Now, we do that with our integrated risk management, but really what's driving all of this is just the very unique capabilities and unique approach of the ServiceNow platform itself. Now, if you work in risk management, you work in ERM, you've probably heard of EGRC, um, and you've probably used EGRCs, but you may not have had a lot of exposure to how powerful the ServiceNow platform itself is. It's this low-code, no-code environment, which means you don't have to spin up like Java developers and .NET developers. Uh, you have ServiceNow administrators go in and configure things, and you have tons of different little frameworks and capabilities all over the platform that you can leverage. So when we say integrated risk management, we are absolutely bringing your risks, your controls, your audit results, everything from your toe and Todd, you know, test plans um, down to you know your evidentiary management, all in a single platform. But it's a platform enabled by the ability to build your own workflows, build your own dashboards at any level, right? So you can have a, a dashboard for maybe a financial analyst or a procurement analyst who's doing double duty, um, have a, a, a different dashboard for your, you know, your overall ARMIC lead and one for your comptroller. You can use artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic uh, processing. You can use predictive intelligence, performance analytics, all these capabilities of the platform. So it really gives you the absolute maximum R of the possible of anything out there. Now for ERM, Right, what we're doing is we're bringing all of this together into this kind of central hub that not only creates tons of efficiency and visibility, but it improves user experience as well. Like we can do things like expose your risk management and your control tasks inside the employee service center so that your teams are getting their work and responding to their work in these requests and tasks in the same place they do all of their other work without necessarily having to go learn like a whole new module or a whole new capability in its entirety. We bring you visibility into everything you can imagine since all of this data, all of these processes and all these teams now live in the same platform. It's very easy for us to visualize any sort of metric you would like and create very uh, unique configured dashboards for your needs. And the result is, yeah, we have customers who have gen just done wonderful things with this. Of course, we ourselves are our own users, but we have a DoD customer who using software and some very skilled, experienced partners, as well as organizational change, right? The desire to make changes and the ability to go through those organizational changes internally um, are now able to track thousands of more risks than they were in the past. And very, very importantly, they were able to wipe out 140,000 estimated labor hours throughout their enterprise. I mean, conservatively speaking, that's you know tens of millions of dollars being saved by consolidating and transforming the way they do things. So I'm going to go ahead and let Tom take over and walk you through some of the product and show you some of the cool capabilities. He's not gonna be able to show you the whole thing, right? This is very large, very mature capabilities. Um, the idea is to give you an, an example of what we do, how things work. And if you'd like to learn more and drive down into, into more details, we can certainly set up a follow-up call. If you do have questions along the way, feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom or use the chat and Teresa and I will help you out over chat as Tom presents. All right, thank you, Tom. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, very uh, thorough introduction and I appreciate uh, uh, the, the kind words. So um, what we're seeing in front of you is, is a, a dashboard that I've created for um, the A123 status. Um, this is something that is not out of the box or something that I was able to create because we have all the data that we need to you know, present the data um, in, in a manner that would help uh, your A123 uh, stakeholders. So, uh, you know, we're just looking at uh, what where we are within an engagement um, for walkthroughs and control tests, and we can see what's past due. Uh, of course, any data that I have here, I can click into so we can dig, dig, dig deeper into what uh, is actually going on within the data. Uh, if, as long as you have the permissions, um, you can configure these dashboards to your um, 
to however you want to make them. So you can add reports, you can add uh, HTML fields, um, videos, so forth. And it's just a matter of uh, a simple configuration. So, um, you know, again, uh, kind of the match point, uh, this is a capability that uh, you have. And, you know, you, as long as you have the data and know where to pull it, um, you can make these dashboards within minutes. I think uh, uh, creating this dashboard took me to eh, maybe half an hour or so uh, with all the reporting. Um, so, you know, as we go through the tabs, you know, we, we can go from uh, what the engagement is to what uh, is important to you as far as issues and caps, deficiencies. Uh, we can look at a calendar um, as what is coming up from an engagement standpoint. Uh, you may be evidence request or something that uh, is something that you need to track because uh, historically it's been uh, a bottleneck for you. So now we have that visibility to look at, you know, where the, the evidence request status stands um, and we can, uh, you know, identify what is it, um, you know, being uh, needs to be reviewed so we can, uh, you know, poke the person to, to make that uh, 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 approval. And then finally, uh, you know, we can look at a, a risk register uh, of all your risk within an organization and, and give us some kind of a categorization, uh, you know, what by entity um, and, you know, what are, whatever your high risk are. So let's stop there. If uh, anybody has any questions about uh, dashboards, again, please use the Q&A. I don't see any questions, but I think this is incredible. So you know, this, this is giving you the overview that you need to be able to identify the different areas of risk, basically, within your organization. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, from an internal control standpoint, uh, if you're uh, in a testing team, uh, this is a great way to, you know, kind of identify, hey, where, where are bottlenecks? What, where do we need to, um, you know, start uh, escalating some, uh, you know, people that get their jobs completed so we don't flip on uh, our schedules. Absolutely. Focus more. That, that's, that's great. Yeah. Please use the Q&A panel if you have any questions. Excellent. So as we go along, um, we're going to be looking at it from an audit management standpoint. Um, so we're an internal control inspection is going on. Um, so we have this audit workspace. So now we can really uh, you know, the, the engagement team leads can really understand what needs to be done uh, from their standpoint. Uh, this is just an overview. So now we, we've got the timeline of what engagements are um, upcoming, uh, what's open, what's overdue. Um, if we want to follow um, any cost or uh, manual manpower resources, uh, we can look at, you know, what's um, over budget. Um, and as we scroll down, you know, we can start tracking what tasks are um, outstanding. So, uh, you know, obviously we want to focus on these overdue, uh, but, uh, you know, we can look at um, any observations that have been created um, and any issues. And, and issues are going to be your deficiencies that can uh, lead into uh, corrective action plans or maybe even a significant deficiency. And if we go down, we just can look at um, all your um, outstanding plans that you have for the year um, and then any engagements that uh, will um, uh, that are out are in progress. And we're going to look at an engagement a little more closely here in a moment. And there's one other thing I just want to show with the workspace. Um, if there's anything that you need from within uh, from a data standpoint, we have the listing and this will uh, provide you with every piece of data that you really need, uh, either from a compliance standpoint, from a risk standpoint, um, or from uh, your, your um, audit execution standpoint. So all your data is here. Uh, you can even make your own list. So if you have a, a, a filter that you can continually complete over and over, uh, you can save it uh, right here. And it will just uh, be one click and, and give you that uh, data um, instantly. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, I don't see any open questions. Um, do you have anything, Teresa? No, I don't. Uh, I don't see anything right now. Excellent. I think you're good to go. Great. 
Everyone's okay. just so impressed. They are. <laughs> so uh, j just to start off with, um, we're just looking at a, uh, a plan that we've created for the annual. Um, so you can start, uh, you know, looking at your, uh, you know, what resources you want to expend as far as man maybe manpower so that you're not uh, overloading all of your inspectors um, and they, they can start planning what they need to do um, in the future. So this is just another uh, piece that's going to have its own workflow from, uh, if we just go here, we can go, you know, from draft to, which is just uh, filling out the form to approving it. Um, uh, and then once it's approved, uh, we put the plan into place. And then you can see all the engagements that um, are attached to this plan. Um, and again, we're just, you know, uh, from an A123 standpoint, we're just going to be looking at um, their FY24 SIF pay engagement. And so the engagement um, is really just uh, a, uh, a lens as to what you need to do to get your internal control testing uh, completed. And uh, from an overview standpoint, you can see exactly where you are within the process. Uh, from scoping it out so you, you can understand what uh, what you're going to be testing uh, to validating and, and making the plan to how you're going to test, what you're going to test, um, what risk or controls, and then um, the actual field work where the inspectors will go and, and perform their testing, uh, make their observations, and then uh, if, if need be, you can have an approval process uh, for the engagement. Uh, or you can just go right to follow up and, and close out any outstanding uh, observations, deficiencies, and issues. And then once those are closed out, then, then the whole um, engagement will be closed out. And again, with, with, just with every overview that uh, we'll have, we, we're going to have the details of what's going on within uh, the engagement, just to give you a quick uh, uh, you know, look at to what, uh, where, where you stand within the engagement. Uh, what you're tracking as far as your tasks, observations, issues, and then any milestones that you may have identified. And then one other kind of neat thing is, is over here, you can actually see exactly what you're going to be uh, testing against, what policies, what uh, regulations, and, and then, you know, if you have a uh, plan that you're uh, going against. Details are, are exactly going to be that. Um, you have to understand who is assigned to this engagement. Uh, you always have a lead, and then um, the inspectors that are going to be doing the testing. And again, you can have an approver if uh, if need be. Uh, you schedule it out. Um, you uh, you can identify what um, when the engagement actually starts, uh, at what phase, and when it ends. Um, and as you um, progress into the fields, uh, the, the actual dates um, will be filled out um, as you go through your phases. And again, if you want to um, you know, start uh, budgeting resources, this is a, a where you can do that. So again, just track you know, who's, who's doing what and, and they're not uh, being overloaded. Uh, you can put your final results in and um, finally, add a uh, report template so that uh, upon the completion, you can publish the report, put it out as a, uh, a knowledge base article uh, so that uh, everyone will have access, um, that, that has permissions to access it, uh, can view it from uh, the knowledge base. So Tom, we have a question. Um, so how okay. difficult is it to, to track the expenses that you were just showing? Is that so, is that a very manual process or is there any sort of automation that, that helps us along the way? So that's, um, just with what you're saying right now it is gonna be manual, but if you do integrate it with our um, SPM, our Strategic Portfolio Management, um, then then you can start pulling that data in uh, integrated and it becomes a much more automated process. That's awesome, thank you. Sure. All right, so that integration is out of the box and yep. it also includes um, like actual time card management as well, doesn't it, Tom? Yeah, um, the, the advanced audit does have time card uh, keeping, and again, it will 
track it against the SPM project that uh, that has been assigned to. So yeah. yes. And that's, I mean, to me, obviously if you're billable, then you probably do have to kind of punch at least a virtual time card, right? And track your hours on the project. But even if you aren't tracking the actual billable state of folks in, in billable hours, I think it, that's really useful just for tracking total labor on the effort, right? Yeah. Whether it, it actually goes to charge code or, or not, it's a great way to actually track how many hours, what is our actual effort doing this stuff? And, and there could be maybe even the cost, um, just, um, you know, making sure that they're within their budget to, uh, you know, any expenses that they're incurring, um, they're uh, making sure that they're within their budget of their um, expenses that they're supposed to be tracking. So again, it's just another uh, great way of, of uh, understanding where you stand within the engagement and that you're, you're not, um, you know, going or over allocating your resources. I don't, no more questions okay. now. Excellent. So as you can see, we, um, you know, from here, we're gonna go through these tabs um, and then we'll do a deep dive into each of these um, as we go along. So uh, the first thing will be the entity and uh, it really an entity is going to be defined as um, some, now that you are actually in, uh, going to be inspecting. So it can be a process, it can be a facility, it can be an application, uh, it can be down to the server if you want. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna be looking at the civilian pay system and the process you know, for this particular uh, uh, engagement. And as you uh, validate the uh, entities that you are going to uh, do, you know, perform the uh, control inspection against, it will automatically pull in the risk controls and test plans um, from those entities. So now you can understand exactly, uh, you know, the scope of, of this engagement. And you can, you know, you, you can go through and, and uh, you know, remove any risk and controls that are not gonna be in scope for this risk uh, or for this engagement. As we go through, um, you can you know you'll see uh, all the risks that are identified for this uh, particular engagement. Um, you know where they are stand with their status uh, and what their assessment scores have been. Uh, same for controls. You can uh, you know you can pull in uh, either uh, you know from the system. It's going to be looking at uh, specifically NIST SP SP eight hundred fifty three controls. Uh, and from the process, it's going to be more A123 related controls. And then uh, the test plans are going to be, you know, what, you know, how the inspectors are going to look at the controls and identify um, if this control has been designed correctly and if it's operating in an effective manner. And it ultimately leads to uh, the task. What, you know, what needs to be done to make this uh, engagement complete? Uh, it can be uh, either control test, um, it can be an interview, it can be walkthroughs, um, combination of all three. And if you need to add any more, uh, you can um, just add, you know, do it from here. Uh, if you have the test plan, those control tests will automatically be um, generated. And um, you just, you know, you just, just again, just start allocating, you know, who will be. Uh, assigned to um, and give you a plan start and end date. And then finally, uh, we can start also tracking all the evidence that has been requested for um, your control test or maybe an interview. Um, it'll bubble up into this particular tab right here. Um, so you can now look at, you know, exactly what, um, you know, where you stand with the control test and, and how, uh, uh, what what the evidence is uh, designed for. So, um, Tom, I think it's really interesting on the right hand side the highlighted details mm -hmm. under scope. You're actually looking at multiple regul multiple regulations here, controls for multiple regulations. So, do yep. you have a, a a test once comply to many process? So, absolutely. So, these controls, um, if you if you put the control in 
um, and you do the testing against it, uh, and if the control is tied to any of these regulations, you can test it once, and it'll comply to you know however many of the regulations that that control is um, a part of, or or policies. So um, you know again, you can look at uh, you you just control you test it once, so you can uh, it'll comply to many different policies um, if the control is added to multiple policies. And I know at ServiceNow, working with our team, it's a huge time savings being Absolutely. able to do that. That's And then you can also, um, you can automate that also. I'm assuming you'll talk about some of our continuous control sure. monitoring as we get along here too. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that and when we get to the control, but yeah, absolutely. Um, once you get into the monitor state, um, you can start adding in what we call control indicators. So we can pull data from either within the platform or from a third party and we can understand what that control is um, operating in an effective manner based on the data that um, is being pulled in and um, you know, setting the benchmark uh, and making sure that it, it uh, gets over that benchmark. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. So we're gonna just dive in a little bit into um, what the what an entity would look like. Um, so we're just going to look at the civilian pay process. And again, you know, we every uh, page is going to have an overview of exactly where they kind of stand within from a compliance standpoint, from a risk standpoint. Uh, and so you can see over time what the trend is for your compliance. Uh, you can see what um, your downstream entities, which um, non-compliant downstream entities are. So you can now look at you know, exactly why, uh, you know, what's going on and, and, and dig to, to a little deeper. Um, and then you can also just really look at uh, the hierarchy. So uh, from the process, you can see what, um, you know, what we got benefits, uh, civilian pay, HR, and travel expense are all downstream. And from a risk standpoint, we can see what methodology we're using for um, to, to establish this risk. Uh, we can see that it's a uh, been low, and, and we can see a trend against it, um, and we'll understand uh, what controls are um, contributing to that risk rating. And if there are any open assessments, we would see those here. And if we have any uh, risk with no controls, that we would see that as well. And just continue on, uh, you know, for the entity, we can see what. Uh, what open issues we have, what's overdue, any policy exceptions, um, and then all the controls that are um, tied to this particular, particular um, entity. And then, uh, you know, I think this is kind of neat. We can see the hierarchy. So we can see what's upstream and what's downstream. So we, you know, understand where this process stands and uh, you know what um, uh, you know what how this process would affect the upstream, uh, what we're inheriting from, uh, what um, uh, aggregated risk scores that we are accumulating based on uh, your downstream. And I'm going to show you the hierarchy right here. So now you, this is how you can build out. Uh, what that, uh, you know, how you can build out the hierarchy and how everything would flow up. So, uh, for, you know, from the lowest level, we can look at a, a server and databases that go up to a system, which go up to your process, which go up to an end-to-end -end process, um, you know, all the way up to your agency. So uh, your data is just flowing from down, down all the way up. Uh, so you can get the aggregated score and, and understand you know, where, where your agency stands from a risk and compliance standpoint. I'm gonna stop there for the entities. Are, um, are there any questions, any outstanding questions or? No, I think I mean, entities are super important and I think it's always, it's always good to understand them because they are the key to to how ServiceNow works. We've got yeah, other, um, got other it's the, it's going to be the building block for IRM, right? And yep. and um, this is where all your risk and control stand, you know, you know, are stored. So you have to have some kind of sense of what your hierarchy is 
and understand what entities yeah, that you do want to track. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is just a, um, a risk that um, came from uh, the entity. Uh, and again, you know, uh, with the overview, you, you can see where you stand within the workflow. Um, so, uh, you know, from draft up to monitor, uh, ultimately to retired, uh, you can look at the hierarchy of this risk. So you can uh, start creating a taxonomy of the risk. So, um, you know, again, um, at, at the lower level, you can push up um, to get a, a full um, understanding of what that risk is from an enterprise level. Um, and then uh, you just look at, uh, you know, who the owner is, what your residual risk is, um, your effectiveness of your mitigating controls, and then, you know, anything that needs um, to be attended to. And then we we're talking a little bit about monitoring. So, you know, again, we can look at, uh, you know, what control testing we have outstanding, and then also um, any indicators that, um, you know, uh, key risk indicators that we've identified for this risk. And then um, just kind of from a uh, housekeeping standpoint, we can see what assessments have been completed on this particular risk, and then um, what the mitigating controls are um, for this risk and, and their state. And I'll stop there. I think you're good to go on. I think the controls, again, the controls are, are important. This The next part yep. here yep. is going to be really enlightening with audit. Yep. So, um, and then you know, kind of set a segue. Um, so we can now look at a, a control. Um, and again, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, what, what we're, where we stand from it in the overview, where we stand um, for the status of this control from drafting it out to um, implementing and testing against it, um, ultimately to monitoring. Uh, we see that this is a non-compliant control. Um, so because it's non-compliant, we do have an outstanding issue um, against it. Um, and we can see that, um, you know, there are a couple of tests that are, um, have been, or uh, in progress. Uh, the details again, we, we just, uh, you know, we see who is, uh, you know, what, what the objective is, uh, who the owner is, um, and what adaptation we're using to um, uh, attest to the uh, control's effectiveness. So any issues that have been opened up uh, will be displayed here. Uh, and I'm gonna do a little deeper dive here uh, after we show the control test. Um, we can look at um, the, any outstanding adaptations or, or previous adaptations that have been completed. Uh, and then uh, we can look at the um, uh, test plan um, that the uh, inspection team will be using for this particular um, uh, control, and then any uh, tests that have been completed. And just like we at the uh, from the risk, we can see what controls um, are mitigating. Uh, from here, we can see which risk this control is mitigating. So we're um, this is only have one risk attached to it. So a little uh, deeper dive into the a control test. Um, you know, again, uh, with the overview, we're just looking at where we stand within the process itself. Uh, but the details um, will show you, you know, what, what engagement we're looking at, what control we're uh, looking at, what entity we're looking at, and who is performing the test um, and scheduling. Um, and then ultimately, we can look at the design, uh, whether it's been uh, effective um, or and, and the operational. Uh, test. Uh, and this one has been uh, deemed as ineffective. So when it's in ineffective, then the overall control eff effectiveness will be automatically uh, lifted to ineffective. And when we close out the control, um, the issue will be generated automatically. 
and then like I showed on the engagement, now we can look at um, the evidence for this, this, this specific control test and we, um, so the, uh, the inspector can you know, have a, a quick uh, reference to what the evidence is. And if we look into the evidence record itself, you know, we can see who um, collected it and, and exactly what they collected. So all the attachments can be uh, stored within this one record. I'm going to stop there for just a moment for I, the control test. Yeah, I think the interesting thing, we, we tend to, to glaze over it fairly quickly, but I think we, we don't really give issues management the 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 respect <laughs> that oh, it's due. I, I'm going to give um, it some love here. <laughs> are you going to give it some love? Because yes. I mean, the fact, it, it's, it's so timing for people, it's, so, it's so time consuming for people. And, you know, the fact that we're automatically generating issues and you're automatically assigning it to the appropriate person is just, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge time saver, but it's also, it re significantly reduces the number of errors, I think, and, yep. and gaps that you've got. Exactly. Yep. So that, that's a great segue. So the issue, um, let's see, let's go back here again with the overview, really an issue is, is. Uh, from a DOD and, and a government standpoint, it's going to be your deficiencies, um, maybe a corrective action plan, maybe even a significant deficiency that's been identified uh, during an inspection process. Um, so the, the issue does have its own uh, workflow uh, from, you know, a new creation all the way up to, you know, closing it out. And um, you can really understand, uh, you know, from the details, what the issue is all about. Uh, you can, um, you know, I, I've added in a couple check boxes to identify that this is part of a corrective action plan. Uh, we could even make it a material weakness. And, you know, again, we're just looking at who's going to be assigned um, to this. Um, and because it's a, ca a cap, you know, maybe we do want a, a um, you know, a, a manager to be reviewing and, and making sure that uh, uh, the cap has been closed out correctly. And again, we can look at, you know, scheduling how long we anticipate this um, issue to be open uh, be, and, and uh, before it gets resolved. Uh, you can start putting your action plans in um, and ultimately, you know, what, what activities you uh, are going to be completed. But the, the cool thing is now we can start breaking out the, this um, issue into remediation tasks so that, uh, you know, we now we can really... Uh, you know, kind of focus on what needs to be done to close out this issue. Now, and these remediation tasks can be, uh, you know, as simple as, you know, maybe a kickoff, uh, you know, get uh, requirements, uh, do the implementation and do, do an after action plan um, lessons learned. Uh, with that, uh, we can start putting in service level agreement um, so we can, you know, make sure we're staying on uh, time with the completion of uh, your tasks, um, and then you know, also you can see what um, generated this particular um, issue. So there is there is a question. Um, okay. The you showed the the end of the planned end date, and you, you talked about SLAs. Um, the question is, does are there notifications that go out to the appropriate people to try to keep everybody on task and on time, and then if not. Is there an escalation path if something is is significantly delayed over a certain period of time? Yeah, um, so that that's that's absolutely part of the platform capabilities is to put in notifications. Um, either you can uh, make the notifications through uh, uh, a what we call the um, the flow designer, um, or you can just make the a notification within the record itself. Uh, just but but you kind of identify what would trigger that notification, uh, who would receive it, what the content of the no of the notification would be, um, and as part of the flow designer, uh, if you want to do an escalation uh, prior to the SLA being breached, um, you can add that in as well. So that the flow designer is kind of where a lot of the magic happens within ServiceNow. It, it's really how you can start automating. A lot of your tasks, um, put, you know, make uh, pull data in from a third party, 
uh, maybe create a, a record if need be, um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, create your notifications or um, even you know put it out to a Teams channel um, if if need be. Perfect. I think that answered the question. And there's Excellent. no more questions right now. Okay. And the final thing I have is just again, you know, um, just show another dashboard from a different perspective. Um, you know, maybe maybe from a uh, you know a higher level audit um, standpoint. Um, again, it's just some more way to visualize the data, um, and you know, it just is more of an out of the box type of uh, dashboard. So, so with that, um, I don't have anything else to show. Wonderful. I don't think we have any questions right now. But um, if you do have questions, please pop them in. You know, we're going to be around here for a couple of more seconds while I close it out for us. We really appreciate you guys joining us um, and hanging in there. It's a fantastic demo, um, Tom, and, and great information, Matt. You know, please, you know, visit us at um, servicenow.risk. Join us on the community. Um, the YouTube, in the chat, I put the... YouTube um, playlist. I've also put the link to the registration page. Um, so so please join us for further for further webinars. And, and again, on Friday, you should be seeing the recording of this webinar. And, and we have um, blog posts that hopefully you all are getting and our sales folks are sharing it with you. Our partner people are sharing it with you that lists all the webinars, all the um, activities that we have that are upcoming, including additional demos from our demo center. This is a QR code you can use to go ahead and get that. Um, and again, we have just one question here before we close it out. Is it possible to build to bulk download attachments from indicators once posted to review? It looks like the bulk attachments can be uploaded but not downloaded on indicator tasks that get closed once closed? Um, that's a great question. I'll have to follow up with that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we can do the bulk attachment or not. That, that's a that's a great question. Yeah, and you know what? It might be a great enhancement if we can't do it. Yeah, exactly. So we have, we, we have your name um, and we will reach out to you after this um, to answer that question. But yeah, thank you for the, you know, really, really thoughtful um, really thoughtful question. Um, and I'm sure if you've been struggling with it, a lot of people have been struggling with it. <laughs> so anyway, um, again, thank you very much, Tom and Matt. Really appreciate all your time and effort. Wonderful webinar. And we look forward to hearing and seeing and joining all of you that have just joined us in future webinars. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Appreciate uh, your, your attention.